This is Omar Miller, and you're watching the Three Point Conversion. Go, Brian, with the first question, back right. Hey, guys. Uh, the way the schedule's worked out, you guys have only played, I think, now one game in five days. Do you see any benefit on your knee, or is whatever pain you have left going to be there until the summertime? Um, no, my, my knee feels great. It feels great, and, uh, you know, I'm happy that, you know, we have, uh, you know, two days in between. Um, you know, in the, I feel like in the Eastern Coast Finals, if I remember, well, we had, it was a game, day game, like we had one day in between, so it was kind of, it was a lot for everybody. Uh, but now, you know, we have time to, you know, take care of our body, you know, spend some time with our family. It's good for us, you know, mentally and physically. And uh, for me also, I always, you know, I always like to have a little bit more time in between the games, um, you know, so I can get a little bit more rested, recover a little bit better and, uh, you know, be able to, you know, go and play, play hard. Kellen, over here. Hey, Giannis, uh, early in your career when teams started focusing on you more and building that wall, how did that help you read the way defenses move and improve as a passer? Um, uh, early in my career, so uh, the first time I, I saw the wall was probably two years ago. Uh, but, like, I was – uh, I was always a capable passer, you know, before that, you know, and uh, it's something that I always like to do. And uh, I had the, you know, coaches and people throughout my career that helped me with like finding, you know, finding the right guy, finding the right pass, and make the right play. Uh, but like once I started seeing the wall two years ago, um, now it's almost, it's about, you know, trust. Uh, it's, and it's kind of hard, like, you know, because you want to be effective, you want to get downhill, you want to do everything, but now you also, and you take it personal also, like there is, there's a team that's building a wall of three people and two guys behind or whatever the case might be and trying to stop you. And now you have to not take it personal and make the right play, find the right guy. I feel like I, I did that better uh, since two years ago. Now I'm doing it better. Like I'm finding, I'm trusting my teammates. I'm finding... Guys, but I was always a capable passer before the wall was created, which is which is funny that uh, there's a defense out there called the Giannis Wall. It's it's funny to me, you know. So uh, it it's it's crazy. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I just gotta keep focusing on myself, keep focusing on what I have to do. How can I put my teammates in a position to be successful? Can be aggressive throughout everything. Thank you. Jim, second row. Hey, yes. I, I guess as a quick follow to that, I have another one. Is is that a is that perhaps the best compliment you could have as a player that there is something like that call that teams <laughs> have tried to devise such a thing? Um, you have to take it as a compliment. You always have to find the fun factor in everything. You know, in that, in the free throw, one, two, three, four, whatever it is, you always got to find the fun factor. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, 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 is, it, is a, it is a compliment that um, there got to be three people in front from stopping me to get in the paint uh, and building that wall. But, yeah, I'm, I hate it, though. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I hate it, but at the end, at the end of the day, you got to figure out a way to uh, play through it. Um, I wanted to ask you, at the Eastern Conference Finals, I think, um, we had, you had talked a little bit about the roles everyone on the team had. You went through the whole roster, even the guys who aren't playing much, and what they're providing for you all in the locker room. I, I'm, I'll loop Dante into this, too, since, since he's been hurt. Um, I don't know if you can share anything, but it's specific, if you could, it'd be great. Um, just what have those, those guys meant in this run since we can't really see them or talk to them like normal, like for, for all of you, um, what have they done? What, what, what kind of things and tangibles have maybe they brought to you guys in, in practices in the locker room? You know, I'll talk, I'll talk specifically for the Dante, you know, and, um, obviously, uh, I don't know if you can talk about his medicals, but, um, 
like he went through his surgery, you know, and everybody go um, through tough moments in, in their career. And this was a tough moment for him in uh, Miami. And through everything that he's going on in his life, he's still here, like he was with us at Prague today. Like he's always around us, he's always with us, and he's, he's always being vocal. Um, he helped me a lot through the Brooklyn series. Like he was talking to me, you know, and uh, he was telling me, you know, what to do. And he's like three, three years, three years or two years younger than me, you know, like, and, and, and you know, that means a lot to me. That means a lot to the team that throughout, like, through what is going on, like he's still here, he's still trying to help you know, the team in any way possible. He's being vocal in the locker room, and um, he wants this as bad as anybody out there on the floor, you know, but he cannot go out there on the floor, but he can do it from the sideline. And that's what he's doing right now. So I'm extremely, I'm extremely proud of him. Vince in the back. Hey, Giannis. Um, Monty, Monty, after game three, mentioned that you went to the line more than, you know, his entire team. A little bit of, I guess, you know, gamesmanship trying to alert the referees for, you know, game four. Do you pay attention to that? Or do you feel like you take a pretty good beating to get to, you know, 17 foul, foul attempts? Um, no, um, I don't have social media. I have it, but I'm not, I'm not on it, you know? So I, I don't um, follow, you know, um, quotes after the games about, you know, the coaches or us or my quotes, I don't follow that. But I think, I think I take a pretty good uh, beating out there, you know, like I have a scratch right here and scratch right here. So, um, you know, they're making my uh, pretty face ugly. But um, it, it, it is what it is. You know, I'm just trying to focus on what I have to do uh, and how I can help my team uh, be successful. You know, um, and um, that's all I'm going, you know, spend my energy on. Um, yeah. Sam in the back, right? To be honest, uh, usually when a guy wins two MVPs and is an all-star every year. We feel like he is the player who he's going to become, but you've always talked about development and there's this conversation in the media with the fans about how you play. And I just wonder two, three years down the road, do you still see changes and improvements that you're working on now? Do you feel like you're getting closer to that peak? And, and what do you make about that conversation where folks say, if you would get in the block more, if you would shoot less and, and talking about how you play the game? Uh, I'm I'm not trying to you know uh, focus in um, what people you know have to say about you know my game and how I should play, but it, it just it's always it comes back to me you know and uh, how what I believe and how I can get better and uh, what I see two five ten years down the road. I I believe that year by year. If I'm healthy and um, I keep working hard by the grace of God, I'm going to keep getting better as a player. I'm going to be more effective. Uh, I'm going to be able to read the plays better. I'm going to be more mature. I'm going to be um, uh, um, okay and being under my skin. I'm going to be okay going to a game and um, shooting all for eight from the three-point line. I'm going to be okay going for in a game shooting two for 10 from the free throw line, because I know there's a bigger picture. I know who I am, uh, but going down the, uh, you know, the line, the road, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, I can get, I can get better. I don't think I'm there yet, but I feel like I get, I get way, way better. But the specific things, you know, uh, that I have to do that I believe I can get better now, I'm, I'm willing to do it. One for you. I mean, you hit this off season. What are you looking at? Uh, if I come back next year and I shoot from the line, eighty percent, I'm better. You know, uh, you can keep it as simple as that. You know, if I, I come back and I'm, uh, I, no matter if I miss a shot or make a shot. I take the next one, like a mindset thing, like do not being scared of missing shots, you know, uh, because when you're not, you're not like a jump shooter, when you miss your first one, second one, you're like, ah, this is not the night. You kind of like go away from it and go to your strength. But, and um, what I think going to, and I don't want to 
to this it's big it's a big uh list but like i feel like going to the summer working on the weaknesses and being okay coming back next year playing a little bit on your weaknesses like like i feel like always i try to go to my strength which is driving getting downhill you know getting in the pain making the right pass and all that and i feel like expanding the game sometimes you got to be okay with playing you know with your weaknesses a little bit which it might not be the strongest part of your game but if you're able to expand it which it might be a 15 foot a, a three point or whatever the case might be it makes you more effective down the line um and i think that's that's where the adjustment for me is going to be thank you chris will be up next thank you guys. Oh.